Nigerians have taken to social media to lambast the Kanu State Independent Electoral Commission for allowing children to vote in the local government elections that took place in the state on Saturday. Several pictures and videos circulating on social media show children said to be between the ages of 9 and 16 being accredited by the electoral officials wearing face masks. At first, some people doubted if the videos and the pictures were recent. They were soon authenticated when officials wearing face masks in compliance with COVID-19 protocols were seen. Now joining us to have this conversation is political analyst Lester Wilcox and Senator Iruobu. He is also an analyst and a publisher. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. It's my pleasure. All right, Thank so you. I, I, I'm going to start with you, Senator. Uh, Senator is joining us um, live on Zoom. Uh, uh, um, there, there's so many cases similar to what we saw um, from Kanu before now and uh, that have been discredited over time and somewhat swept under the carpet saying that these are just rumors or make-believe but with all the pictures and the videos that surfaced on the weekend um, does this not raise a concern about the results that have been coming from Kanu states in subsequent elections or previous elections yes it, it does raise a lot of questions just like you noted the issue of Kano has been a recurring decimal, and and um, you know, every time, uh, no matter how uh, difficult uh, election terrain is, you always have such a huge number coming from Kano State, and uh, it has always thrown question of eligibility. I know before 2019 election, it was a huge issue. Uh, that required uh, INEC to go and investigate. And the outcome of that investigation is still inconclusive because um, there wasn't a really uh, certainty in the statement or, or, of those uh, that were mandated to go and uh, uh, carry out investigation. And this keeps keep on coming up. And um, of recent, to, to tell you that uh, some of their politicians are actually in cahoots with what you see going on. Uh, the architect of uh, the amendment to uh, put underage girls into that are married. Mm -hmm. And the person is the Senator Gaia, who has been a long time senator from Kano State. It's from the same state that is pushing this um, uh, angle of amendment. It's from that state. And they actually admitting that an underage, he used the word he, that to admit that, yes, these women are Underage married girls. Married, I think, I, yes. yes. They, are using, they are using marriage to try to cover up the illegality, you know? Using excuse of marriage to try to cover up illegality. As long as that word underage is there, meaning that it's, it's unconstitutional, but they are trying to use that to have to legalize it. That's the amendment. And uh, thank God, what's uh, that um, name? This senator from Ekiti State, this lady, um, I remember yeah. her name. Olujimi. have spoken that uh, she's rising against it. Uh, Olujimi, yes, 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 yes. So it, it's not only that you are flouting the electoral law, you are also uh, taking advantage of these children because um, the election requires that you as an adult to be able to make up your mind and choose mm. who you want to vote for. But in a sense, it's actually, it's manipulation. You already started manipulating these children from uh, they are, they are, they are, they are taking advantage of their childlike innocence. It, because it, don't tell me that they already know how to make up their mind. No. That means uh, if you tell them, okay, go and vote, they, they go and vote uh, whoever you choose, not their own choice. Because they cannot be able to interpret political choices. And that's why voting age is made for adult 18 years mm. let, let me come to you Lester. Uh, in 
2019, uh, February, um, local council polls in Kano State, there was an uproar also similar to this uh, about underage voting. Um, there were queries why these children were in possession of PVCs. And let's not forget that at the same time, in these parts, people were unable to access their PVCs. I'm talking about in the southwest, in the south, south, in the southeast. But children in Kanu State in 2019 had access to PVCs and they were lining up to vote. And several elect electoral officials, which I will name as we continue this conversation, have attested to the fact that they were threatened to allow these children to vote. And it, it, this is my question, just as I asked him, does this not call to question every single election that has taken place in Kanu State? Well, um I don't think so, in a broad terms, if you are talking about the, legal, the authenticity of Nigerian elections. Now you are bringing in... I'm talking about Kano State. Kano State is yeah. what we're talking about right I know, now. I know, I know, I know. We can't take Kano State in isolation of River State, of Akwa Ibom State. Well, Kano State is where we have seen reoccurring yeah, decimal uh, well, of well, young well, children well, 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 voting. I'm not, I'm, not from, I'm not from Kano, so... But the pictures I, are I, from Kano. I get Kano. something from social media. So if I get something from social media, I, I would take them with pinches of salt. Yes. If you talk about local government elections, which is what those figures you are seeing today, local government elections, be it in Kanu, be it in Kaduna, be it in... Okay, Kaduna tries something different. Be it in your State, be it anywhere. It's a sham. But there are no children No, no, no. It, it, voting. It, because, because you didn't see... I know where you're going, can, but let's not pivot no, away no, from no, the you conversation. You are not seeing the to make his point. Can I make my point? Yes, then please. you can interrogate my points. Look, if you're talking about local government elections, and Senator will attest to that, if it be it in Delta, be it in Aqua Ibom, be it in Rivers, be it in Meduge, Ebronu, be it in Sokoto, local government election in Nigeria is a sham. So it is not unlikely you find all manner of shenanigans that goes on in local government because the ruling party of a state wins all. I'm sure Anambra will hold the local government election next very soon. I'm sure Delta will soon hold. I'm sure Rivers, okay, Rivers, their own will be sometime this year. Find out if another party will ever win. And even a councillor seat. So that is for local government election. Now, if you are taking to national election, this Kanu has always, people has always looked at Kanu. I don't know why we pay more emphasis on Kanu and allow other states to run riots. It's the same, it's, it's, it's the same manipulation everywhere. I am from River State. And I can tell you for free, that now, because people are paying attention, thinking that Kano was, his, was the only, only state that swings victory for APC in 2019. Meanwhile, you forgot that there are states before now that you have all manner of names. I mean, you are from the South-South. You know what they call Prewinkle. You know what they call Lobster. You know what they call uh, uh, Catfish and all whatnot. You find on the voter register that at the end of the day, they've all voted and somebody wins. So I'm not excusing anybody. It's illegal. It's an aberration to, like the senator said, to bring children to start manipulating them. It can be child. It can be adult. It's not, I mean, it's, yeah, you're even seeing children going to uh, giving PVC to go and vote. What of in other places where there's even nobody to vote and you just write results? Or somebody sits in his room or somewhere, turn print and get a result. Like it happened in Cross River State. Well, again. So, again, these are, we must fight electoral. I, agree, I totally agree. We must with fight you. electoral inadequacies. Alexa, I headlong. totally agree with where you're coming from. But children are the focus here. Okay. I'm going to pose my next question. We are in a world where we're trying to save children. We're in a world where children are being abused, exploited. I mean, look at what's happening in the Congo. Look at what's happening in some parts of Nigeria. These children are being exploited. And then, for an election, children again are being exploited. What does this say about the government, whether it be APC or PDP? Because I don't want us to make this a, politi a political party issue. We're talking about the state in itself and the leadership government, whether it be at local uh, levels or what does this say about the leadership of that state? What does it talk say about the parents of these children? Because, you know, when we talk about government, we just look at our leaders. There's a government, there are governments in different phases. Yeah. You, you're, you know, government in your houses, 
governments in communities and societies. This, this makes every single person in Kanu state somewhat complicit and bereft of I, 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 some I, sense of responsibility, I, I doesn't totally, it? I totally agree with you. That's why I said we're, we're, we're looking at a, 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 a monster that we are building. That is, that it's not helping us in terms of our political movements. If we keep uh, creating situations that are at, at, at variance with norms, like you have said, exploiting children, I totally condemn it. Now, those cards may not have belonged to those children, number one. Those cards, you can be sure, will, does not belong to those children. INEC, during registration, will not register children because there's going to be thumbprint print and everything. Those cards do not belong to those children. Now, those cards must have belonged to either the fake, um, uh, the multiple registrants, the fake names found on the voter registers, the all kinds of things. So a politician will just pack them, and then in order to have some element of legitimacy with terms of thumbprint print and everything, they now share it among kids. That may not, may not be a state policy. That may be one individual who wants to prove he can deliver, or who wants to be over you know, Some of these actions that we see may not be a function of state policy, yeah. but like you said, it's, a, it's, it's, it's levels of responsibility, levels of governance. It might be from the home. It might be the father of those, some of the children, or all these imageries, one, uh, uh, one preacher or so will gather them, and, he's, and he has cards he gives to them. So it may not be a state policy, but we must fight it as a people, okay. collectively. Because so, it's not only happening in Kanu, I'm sure it's happening in Bauchi, I'm sure it happens in Jigawa, all this under eight and, and children voters. Um, Senator, you are on the field most often. You report and cover elections. You are always out there. Um, let's talk about the complicitness of the INEC officials also, because we see them in their face mask. They don't look like there's a gun to their head. They don't look perturbed in any way, but they're allowing these children to vote. I mean, um, some time ago, a particular election official, um, I think his name was Lai, said that he was being threatened um, in Kanu State in 2019 to allow children vote. There is a level to which you can protest and say, I will not do it. But then it looks like all the INEC officials in that picture were okay with it. What does this also say about INEC being an umpire for our elections? It does also call to, you know, um, it calls, it's a cause for concern as to if INEC has been credible at all, ever, when it comes to our electioneering process, doesn't it? Yeah, I, I would say if they are credible ever, I would say, uh, I will use the words, they are not perfect. And uh, <clears throat> they are also working towards perfection. That means there are some defects, either structural or from the personnel. Uh, like you noted, why have them been unable to, you know, because this, uh, to tackle this issue? Uh, I, I just don't want to, us to go be, beyond, drag us beyond the topic we are discussing, because there are many uh, issues uh, confronting uh, electoral system, the issue of vote buying, the issue of progress. Mm -hmm. But I'm sure what we are talking particularly today is about uh, underage voting, and uh, it has been an issue, especially in with Kano State, just like I noted, and you also stated you while you are asking me. The issue of intimidation is there, and there is something that is called uh, political culture, mm -hmm. and um, uh, yes. It may not be political parties or a state, like my brother have said, that it's not as if a state is sponsoring it. But if, if it's not tackled, it becomes a political culture. Mm -hmm. Because over time, the same issue has continued coming up in this same state. And like I said, it, before the 2019 election, it was a, a just like there's opera now, it was also... Uh, I don't know whether it's a local government election or before All right, that. Senator, we're, we're out sure. of time. Quickly, what do you think can be done? Quickly, in a sentence, how can we tackle this? Because it looks like nobody's answering questions. Every time these issues come up, the government of the state, you know, shoots it down. Going forward, will this be stopped and how? Quickly. 
It can be stopped if there's political will. If I next time is grand and look, we are not going to. If you insist, if our officials are in danger because of this, you cancel the election in, in, in this area. We are not, we are going to, they will not send until there's a guarantee. Then we've always had a security uh, personnel uh, uh, partner with INEC to ensure that there is peaceful election. You deploy enough uh, uh, okay. uh, security personnel and they should do their job. So it takes okay. a political way. It's not for us to resign. And we are responsible, INEC and security agents. All right, thank you very much. Senator Iregu is a, a journalist, is an analyst, and of course, a publisher. Thank you very much for joining us. Alastair Wilcox is a political commentator. Thank you very much for being part of the conversation. And of course, we will take a short break and see what Nigerians have to say about this same issue. And when we come back, I'll give you my take. I think the blame goes to the INEC. Personally, I blame the INEC. First and foremost, how would they register those children? How do those children get the voter card? Those children didn't steal this voter card. Someone registered it for them and someone issued the voter card for them. And um, the other side, the same INEC, I, I, I will still portion the blame to them based on. I know there are some political graduates that masterminding the whole scenario when it comes to the sense of voter card registration. But uh, we cannot keep on blaming the politician alone. The INEC as a body that control this system is supposed to take it to the, uh, the level that at least we should be, able to be talking about fair and fair, uh, 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 what they call it, fair and fair election. Uh, well, underage voting is not uh, what the issue is because even the adults, we are here to get. A, a good firm of the voting in a system where there is no corruption and everything is uh, tr uh, the transparency is there we won't be talking about underage vot voting so me what i believe is that we should sort the normal voting instead of going to underage voting to complete so underage voting is not the the solution to what we have in the country I believe that once our government can make the voting to be free and fair, and transparency is the, is the bedrock, I believe we, we should get there anytime from now. Yes, uh, in Kano, say we all saw that video sometimes ago, uh, children, under age children lining up for voting. It's quite alarming, and I don't think uh, this country, when we are talking about restructuring, those are the issues we should talk about. The government, as, long, uh, as well as uh, INEC, should be blamed for that issue. In that, it's because of how our government in this country are, because everything is corrupt. At election, anything called election, underage cannot be there. If you are not from 18 above, election is not for you. It's time for my take. Here we go again, defections from party A to party B, no clear-cut ideology, nothing that the people can truly trust or hold on to. Elections are on our politicians' radar once again, and so the games have begun. Tempers will flare, friends and enemies will be made, but where do we, the people, come in? Are they fighting for us? Have they kept the promises they made before the last elections? Have they given us the change and good governance they promised? Now, as we gear up for 2023, will our voices be heard? Or will it become business as usual? Only time will tell. Well, that's my take. I'm Mariana Cohn. Thanking you for watching. Don't forget, you can follow us on social media at Plus TV Africa on Facebook, Twitter, and on Instagram. And you can watch a replay of the show on our YouTube page. Have a good evening.